What? Something wrong with the pull start. Hang on. I think I know what's going on here. Doesn't help that I left the fuel on. So I've gone to fire up the old Scott Bonner and straight off the bat it appears that the pull starter has packed it in. However, that is not the case. And in actual fact, the engine is locked up. Now it's not all bad. What has actually happened is I've left the fuel on as I always do. Now there's obviously some bad fuel in there or something, a bit of rubbish in there. And it's got stuck between the needle and seat holding it open, which has caused the carby to overflow, which has flowed into the top end and has hydraulically locked the engine. So I'm gonna show you how to sort it out and something very important to check once we get that sorted out. So let's go have a look. All right, same we'll be playing with hydrocarbons. We'll need our gloves. I'll tell you what, you lot bring out the best in me. This is something I probably should get in the habit of doing more often, looking after myself and being a good role model for me kids. All right, so first things first, we're gonna make sure the fuel is off. From here, we're going to undo this bowl on the bottom. Now, that's a 10 mil. 11, nine, huh. This has gotta be some sort of joke. We'll grab a spanner. Ah, oh, fuck. All right, so once you locate your rear 10 mil, pays to put some rags down, because there's gonna be a bit of fuel everywhere, especially if you've got a nice restored machine. All right, now we're just gonna crack this bottom one off. Probably use a an ice cream container or something to catch the fuel, or just let it run into the rags like I'm gonna. That's why it's a good idea to wear gloves. The one on the side's actually a drain, so you can crack that off and let it drain out into a cup of some sort. A little bit of crud in there, nothing over the top. While we're here, this little pin, if you can't get your fingers on it, might grab some pliers. Clean those pliers here, pull that out. Put that somewhere where it's not gonna go missing. Then we pull this little float out. That needle is in there. And I can see there is a little tiny blade of grass on there. Now that is stopping that needle from seating in that seat and letting the fuel run straight past it. So just a little float bow, so as this floats up, pushes the needle up, seats in the seat, stops the fuel flowing in, just like your toilet. And that's all that was stopping that. Little piece of grass that's obviously got into the fuel tank at some point. Sometimes what's in there is that small that you don't even see it. It doesn't take much. Now before we put that on, we might give that a quick clean out. Got a bit of carby and throttle body cleaner here. Probably just a wipe out with the rag would be plenty. Blow out with the air compressor, whatever. All right, bolt that back on. There's not really a whole lot of room in these to put a um, inline fuel filter in it, which is a bit of a bummer. A lot of them have them on the bottom of the tap as well, like part of the motor, part of the carby I should say, but really you just shouldn't put bad fuel in there and you wouldn't have a problem, but it's not always the case, is it? All right, next up we're gonna pull the spark plug. Now, now I haven't left enough length on the end of my hour meter to make it easy. Now good practice is to always 
below compressed air around the outside. If there's a bit of junk in there, when you pull the plug, it's not gonna fall down into the cylinder. Even if it's not dirty, just, just blow it out anyhow. 13, 16, spark plug socket. Straight away, you'll see. Oh, did you see the fuel come out of there? There she goes. That's why we couldn't turn it over. Hydraulics with all that fuel. Get some compressed air in there. Now, you might think that you could just put that spark plug back in now, fire it up and, and go. Whereas that'll probably work, there's a reason you probably shouldn't. All that fuel that's been sitting in the top of that cylinder would have leaked past them rings. And guess where it is now? In the bottom end. There's a good chance this will be over full. Yep. So that is now oil and fuel in the bottom end. So not only is it over full, but it has also been thinned out with fuel and we don't want that. So there's only one thing to do, change the oil. Now I don't have any flash systems for draining the oil. I just pretty much make a mess and then clean up when I'm done. I have left the spark plug out for the time being. Um, if you do do that, make sure you don't drop anything down the plug hole. I'm just going to leave it out and let it dry out for as long as it can. Get me a little ice cream container. 10 mil again. pay to take the filler cap out just to let the air get in there and the oil come out a little bit quicker. Should measure that, see how much was really in there. Get your sump plug and a little washer to seal it. I'm just gonna leave that to drain for now and I'm gonna go pick the kids up from school, come back and finish it off. I'm back from picking the kids up. Pretty confident that that's all drained out. Had plenty of time. Put that back in. Gloves aren't as necessary now. Done with all the dirty work. Just want to nip that up. Just tighten it up to your strip it, then back it off half a turn. Perfect. No, they don't need to be very tight at all. Just uh, firm enough that they're not going to rattle loose. So from here, I'm going to top the oil back up. Pretty sure it holds half a litre. That's about exactly what we've got in there, so I might put most of it in there, then check it. Lucky for me, this mower was due for its annual oil change, so it wasn't end of the world. I might put the last of it in there, just about. See the oil sitting in the bottom there? Right, 
right now we just need to put the spark plug back in. I poked this in here while I was out for 10 minutes, getting the kids at school. Drop the plug back in there. Being extremely careful not to cross thread it. Nip him up. Oh, what'd you know? The rubber came out with a socket. I was excited to be trying to get that off the end of the plug in there. Generally what happens. Lead back on. Now we should. Not hydraulic anymore. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it starts. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. If you're in your shed. Let's set fuel on. Give it a moment to fill that uh, bowl back up with fuel because it'll be bone dry. Oh, look at that. First crack. All right, so it's as simple as that. So ideally, if I hadn't have left the fuel on, I probably would have worked it out because it probably would have been running crap and I might not have had to do the oil change, which wasn't the end of the world because it was due anyhow. But um, yeah, it's a good reason to turn your fuel off and uh, make sure you put clean fuel in. You know, when you are refueling, clean around the cap, Try and keep as much crap out of the tank as possible. Ideally, a little inline filter would be good just to prevent anything from getting in there. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of room in there for one. Um, you probably could get it in there. It'd just be a pain to change, I guess. But um, yeah, let me know if this has happened to you. This is the second time I've done it now, so um, yeah, I'll definitely be a little bit more mindful in the future. Maybe the tank needs a clean out, I don't know. There's obviously a bit of crap in there. If there's grass inside the carby, so. Anyhow, that's it for today. We'll see you next time. Cheers, legends. So that little motor holds 500 mil and we're well and truly over it. So all of that is fuel. I'd say that's more than another 100 mil of fuel in there. Definitely would not risk it personally. Drain the oil and start again.